Okay, so here we are, end of week two, and it's just a summary and roundup of what's been going on this week. First thing is, it's still continued smart guards work really well. Basically, independently preventing two hypos per day without me knowing about it. I'll take a look back at my pump and I'll go, oh, pretty cool, it's suspended a couple of times. So let me just show you an example of today. should be able to see there those two suspends that happened before lunch um, so that prevented a hypo when I was actually presenting which is pretty cool also in my uh, blog earlier in the week had a couple of glasses of wine and actually prevented the hypo from the alcohol independently get a good night's sleep so that's pretty cool and following the tips that I received in uh, Paris at the ATTD conference I've actually got the accuracy of the sensor down from around 15% difference down to about 11% difference so close to about a 25% improvement in the sensor accuracy which is pretty cool so what have I learnt from this week is that smart guard continues to work really well overnight when there's just the basal rate going in and suspending putting the basal back in prevents the high pose it does that really well and it also does it really well three hours post meals. Where I found that the smart guard doesn't work as effectively is in that two to three hour period post meal when maybe if you have over bolus and got the carb counting wrong, the drop's too quick for stopping the basal to work. So consequently what I've decided to do is make sure that I keep all the alarms off during the night and have a smart guard level of three. So it means that the pump is gonna to aim to keep my glucose level above 4.1 during the night. But then what I've done is post meal, so between 8am and 10am in the morning, I'll actually raise that level to 3.4, so the pump is going to aim to stop my glucose level hitting 4.5, 1.1 above, and I've actually turned the alarms on there, so if I actually over bolus, I'll actually get now an alarm when it suspends, so I can look and see how much active insulin is on board and make a decision whether I need extra carbs, because often the stopping basal won't work. And then, but then 10 o'clock till 12, I'm going to stick um, a level back of 3.2, so the pump's going to aim to keep me above 4.3 and turn the alarms off again. And similarly for lunch, in that 1 pm to 3 pm period, I'm going to have the alarms on in case I over bolus for lunch, and the same again for my evening meal from probably half past 8 to half past 10, um, I'm going to have um, the alarms on. So that's something that I've learned, and I've put a description in the blog below of how that works. Also what I have learnt is sometimes when the suspend before low goes on and it actually stops the hypo is that there's obviously a little bit of basal missing there and then when you come to that meal time sometimes when you bowl as you go high post meal. Today's a good example so let me show you. You can see that just before lunch there was two suspends so I'm missing about a unit or two's worth of basal there and then when I come to bolus at lunch time because there's a bit of a lack of insulin around I have to go high post meal and come down so my learning for that is going to be if I have a couple of suspends before though which is brilliant to stop the high pose I'm going to add a little bit of extra bolus about a unit or two because the basal that I'm on onto the bolus at lunch time so I don't get that high post prandial so every day is a school day and then, so, okay, so what's also to come? So a couple of things I've picked out is some people are not so comfortable in understanding what the accuracy of sensors mean. So I'm going to do a separate um, vlog for the accuracy of sensors and some other tips for that. And one good thing I learned this week, um, thank you to a few people on Twitter, is that actually my carb counting, how I've done it always since I did my research back in 2008 using the American information is, you count all the carbs and then you deduct the fibre and that works if you're in America but if you're in Europe all the nutritional information on the packet it already has the fibre taken out of the total carbohydrate content so I have effectively been undercounting my carbs so starting this week I'm going to do my carb counting with counting all the carbs and forgetting about the fibre and that probably means I'm going to need to adjust my carb ratio so we'll have to see how that goes so keep tuned for some more vlogs and yeah off to the gym standard <laughs>